Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Status Report highlight for the 14th of August, 2018. To start things off, our lead producer, Eugen, provides an update on the current state of the first content update, as well as our plans moving forwards. Our leads from gameplay programming, animation, and sound give a quick recap of their past two weeks of work. And of course, the Status Report is closed off with the Community Spotlight, so don't forget to check that out. So let's kick things straight off with lead producer, Eugen. Although the struggle with the server performance is ongoing, we're seeing some good results overall in our goals. We have implemented multiple optimizations during our stress test period, and there are more coming. Right now, we are seeing some unintended behavior in the multi-core server environment, and that's our current focus. Running servers on a single core, we're experiencing a large upswing in the server FPS that should, in theory, be even more noticeable in multi-core configuration. But unfortunately, that is not the case now. Some of these issues are quite complex, so we will be tweaking the server code base even more. The first content patch is in an okay state, but we're still not happy with the overall performance. As far as content goes, that seems to be received well, and I'm happy to see people enjoying the returning features and flavor that was added to them. Once we're happy with the performance itself, we will move the build over to experimental branch of the game and make the build available to the server owners in our community. We know it has been a long time and the community has suffered because of it, but if we work together, we can make this dream game of ours a reality. Besides the development of our first content patch, there is a lot of ongoing work put into the beta features. On Friday last week, we have concluded the primary feature development and the internal build seems to be in good place feature-wise. The focus has shifted to bug fixing and there are more than 2,000 fixes to get through and we want to make sure we get them done. We will share more details about the next patch after Gamescom. I know some of you are worried about missing features or content. Over the last few years, there have been many features designed and an insane amount of content created both externally and internally. Some of these things make Daisy better as a game and simulation. Some of them can be considered more or less an added flavor or even clutter in the overall vision of what the game should be. Daisy needs to be fun first and foremost. It needs to meet your expectations in behavior, stability, and balance. It also needs features that support the player interaction and empower players who want to invest time into learning the details and intricacies of simulation itself. We read everything you guys say. This is a game made by gamers and for gamers. We want to enjoy the game with you, and even though the struggle is sometimes real, all of us want the game to succeed the same way you do. Eugen finishes by mentioning the Xbox version, which I have a video up now on the channel, and what they're testing is the same version we see on the PC stress test. Saying one of the benefits of utilizing modules of the Infusion engine is being able to have a game like DayZ running on a console. We always want to grow the DayZ community, and it's important not to forget about other platforms. And now let's move on to lead designer, Peter. What would DayZ be without the possibility to restrain others and put them into captivity? Now you can also restrain yourself if you would like a plot twist. Of course, you will be able to struggle free if something goes wrong, while the character has his hands restrained. His inventory is blocked, as well as his quick slots. However, his inventory is accessible by other players through the facility part of inventory screen. We are also working on the implementation of continuous interactions with objects in the environment. It will allow us to broaden possible interactions like taking items directly into hands or swapping them, slowly opening doors, that'd be pretty cool, seamlessly drinking from whales or switching channels on the radio transmitter laying on the ground. Speaking of items on the ground, there is a comeback of dropping items from hands to the ground directly in the world. Of course, the take animation is displayed instead of the drop animation in the video on screen. Now, as a placeholder, the next step will be a shortcut for putting an item from your hands into the inventory cargo, even without it being assigned to a quick slot, as we would like to minimize any unnecessary access of the inventory. The work on firearms is still ongoing as well. The support for the new weapon and item swapping animation is being implemented, after which there will be the possibility to add independent shoulders. I think that means putting a weapon on either shoulder, but I'm, I'm not too sure, correct me if I'm wrong. Recently, the long-awaited leaning has been reintroduced in its basic form, as it was in 0.62 version. However, we would like to make it more prominent and useful for gameplay later. Weapon inertia was missing as well until now, and its new implementation is portrayed as sight misalignment. Its degree depends on rotation speed. A nice side effect to it is a parallax shift in the new 3D scopes. As the latest addition to the pack, 
welcome the first implementation of lifting weapons in front of obstacles. This mechanic will prevent firearms from clipping through objects geometry, may it be walls, infected or other characters. Don't worry about self-defense, as in these cases you will still be able to use a melee attack with your firearm. The lifting at obstacles takes various firearms lengths and their muzzle attachments into account. Also, progress on firearms malfunction was recently resumed and unjamming support is being added to all firearms, which will be available in 0.63 version of DayZ. Type of malfunction used is failure to eject, which causes mechanisms to jam where next round fails to feed. Chance of malfunction is directly proportional to condition of the firearm. In case the firearm is fed from detachable magazines, the chance of its malfunction is combined with condition of used magazine. Firearms and magazines condition can be repaired making weapon cleaning kit a valuable and important item. Whew, really good information there from Peter. Now let's move on to lead programmer, Mirak, who is talking about gameplay features. Let's start off with vehicles. Probably the biggest and most complex feature we're now working on is vehicles. Almost everything had to be rewritten, including character parts, in order to be able to add additional vehicle-related features more easily in the future. Victor already showcases some progress two weeks ago, and I'm sure we will show you more in a couple of weeks. Looking forward to their vehicles, especially them helicopters. Deliver them to us. Leaning. We're reintroducing a very basic implementation of leaning. The first iteration is in the game, and now we have to polish things like animations, camera, and probably more. Check out this first teaser on screen now. Weapon changing. We have implemented a basic system for the changing of weapons. For now, we are supporting only firearms, but the rest is on the way. Sights misalignment, which means weapon inertia in iron sights and scope. Now, only a few parameters have to be tweaked in order to achieve the best gameplay experience with this feature. A short but sweet update there from Merrick. thank you very much. Now let's move on to lead animator, Victor. Over the last weeks, we've been creating and implementing new attack animations for the infected. That's light, heavy and running attacks with individual arms to get some variation into the PvE encounters. For the player character, we've started the implementation of basic facial expressions during combat actions. Oh, I didn't even know that was a thing. We've also implemented multiple improvements for the idle character animations, like blinking, exhaustion, and new idle movements in general. Apart from that, the team has been working on placing and deployment animations that will be used while handling cars, during base building, or when placing traps. All of this comes with numerous fixes to our player animations and the animation graph. And finally for this week, sound designer Philip. Our audio team went on a trip across our offices and beyond to record some footage for the reintroduction of vehicles. The results are new engine sounds as well as tire sounds for different surfaces. When it comes to shooting, we will bring back an armor feature of the shooting controller, which silences insects and birds for a while after a gun is fired. To add to the infected, we've implemented and improved several of their animation sounds with steps and rustling clothing during three different states, idle, running and climbing. Here we have some pictures on screen from our tires and engine recording. Nice Skoda lads! And that is all for this week's status report highlight for the 14th of August 2018. Do not forget, as always, to check out the community spotlight down below for all the great community created content. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't and you want to. Let's talk about this status report in the comment section below and I'll see you peeps next time.